Once again, we're back on Lutherans Alive with Clarence and Marlene here to talk about Mission Builders um, and the current project here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Thank you both for being able to come in and to share uh, some things about the project. In our last segment, we were talking, uh, Clarence, you were sharing some experiences about uh, uh, learning on the job and, and getting some experience. I did want to ask Marlene, from the ladies' point of view, um, I'm sure some of the women do drive nails and use the saw and such, but there are a lot of other aspects to the Mission Builders program, aren't there? Very definitely. We're like a family. We begin each day with devotions at 7.15, which we share with the fellas. And we do breaks twice a day um, just to get the men out of the sun and give them a chance to get a break. And if we have volunteers, it is such a fun time to sit and share. Mm. Uh, we also, in a church setting, we do we fold church bulletins. I we I've worked in soup kitchens. Uh, we've uh, done quilting. We make blankets. Uh, we we do anything that that would help a church, or uh, or we are there just to be there for people who want to come. And we have a lot of people who just come and sit and want to visit and find out about us and they will tell us their story and why they attend certain churches and some of the problems that they're having and facing and it's an exchange time. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a great uh, aspect of the program that you're not just task oriented on the building of the building but it's about relationships, it's about the community of the mm -hmm. church and like you say sharing whether it be faith or some of the other tasks um, around at the time. How many different states would you say now you've been able to be involved in a Mission Builders project? Oh, we've been in New York, South Carolina, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Michigan, Montana, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. Oh, that's quite a great list, and I'm sure every one of them has benefited from the efforts and, and the work that you've been able to do there. Uh, uh, i just like to point out, too, that most of the people, for mission builders, most 95% or more are retired. Okay. So it's, uh, and occasionally we do have people that are not retired that work with us, but they don't have the, they like to come for two or three weeks and because they just have limited vacation. Right. And to see what the program is going to be. And then uh, they have more time when they're retired. Uh, also, most have an RV that we live in on site. The congregation provides us uh, with a place to stay. And normally we like to stay right on site. And uh, they provide us in with electric water and sewage. Mm -hmm. And they pay us a minimum wage, which uh, is required because uh, they have to pay us uh, workman's comp. They have to okay. pay workman's comp for us. And we okay. have to be an employee of the church to be eligible for workman's comp. Okay. Uh, right now we're working at Camp Agape. Which is one of our local southwestern Pennsylvania camps in Hickory, PA. Mm -hmm. And um, how long have you been on site there now? Uh, we, as a construction manager, I came uh, April 8th. Okay. So I've been on site for a month now. Our crew just arrived last, started to arrive last Friday. We have, we had two crew members, couples arrive Friday, one from Texas and one from Wisconsin. Uh, the other two crew members arrived on Sunday. One was from Minnesota and the other one was from Texas. So we have two crew members from Texas and one from Minnesota and one from Wisconsin. Very good. And what's the project this, this time? This will be a retreat center for the camp, which will consist of a building 66 by 32. Okay. Uh, we'll have a kitchen and two restrooms on one end, and the rest will be a gathering hall, which you can divide up into uh, individual rooms uh, for uh, different types of classes, or if they have a large group, they'll have a large group room. Mm -hmm. uh, we just started, it was slab, and we finished the slab in that about a week and a half ago, so it's been waiting for the crew to come. Okay. And we just started work yesterday, was our first work day. And today, so we're starting to build headers and things today, and tomorrow we'll probably start walls and have a wall or two ready by the end of the day to get put up. Um, this will be, 
for us will be a shorter job. It'll be about 2,200 square feet. Okay. So it'll be, and we'll also be more turnkey on this. Normally, our crews devote three months out of their a year for a project. By in that three months, we normally have a building framed with the windows in, the exterior doors in, the roof on, and it weatherproof. And basically, that is our niche as mission builders. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, then most of our crew goes home. And then the congregation can pick up with the finish work and The go congregation forward. can finish, pick up with the finish work, or it can be a subcontract. It depends on the congregation. Mm -hmm. And it, we, you can name it, it happens. We've had some congregations where it's all been subcontract after that. We've had other congregations where they've done the whole project after that by uh -huh. themselves. And so it depends on the congregation. In this case, uh, it's a little different working at a camp because this is a, p a part of this southwestern Pennsylvania synod. So we're really working with about, I don't know how many congregations you have in this synod, but I'll say, I know about I'd 200. be... <laughs> okay, so we have 200 congregations that we're really working for. Uh -huh. And so it's a little different for, for volunteers in that because they, don't, they can't see exactly what's happening. Uh -huh. So uh, it would be a little different and it would be a little challenging in that respect. Mm -hmm. Well, it sure, sure is a great project, and we're very happy to see the, uh, the kinds of things that will be made available when this building is finished for the camp because, as you say, it will serve also 200 congregations. There will be a lot of people who will benefit from it. One of the things we like to talk about when we have folks on our program is how you see your faith being a part of what you do, whether it's a ministry or, or the work that you're in. Now, you've told us that uh, obviously this wasn't your vocation as uh, teachers and administrators, kind of moving on to a new phase of life. Uh, how would you describe to, to someone um, what this means to your faith or how you see your faith um, kind of inspiring and, and energizing what you do? Can I go first? No, you go first and I'll finish it. I to me, it's a part of your faith because as a Christian, whether it's Lutheran or whatever, you have your abilities are, have been given to you. And part of your call as a Christian is to go out and help others and serve. And so I see this as a part of my faith which says I have some skills that I can offer mm -hmm. and this allows me to use the skills I've been given in service to other people and so that's really what if we didn't serve others uh, are really that's what faith is about I agree and so uh, it provides an avenue to express your faith mm -hmm. with your skills you have well said Marlene what would you add there's not too much I would add to that because we we both have approximately the same faith and how we believe in things and how we um, deal with people and our relationships and I like the relationships that I have made uh, the friends that I have made uh, go beyond just friendship there is a tie that is there and I always had the feeling that if I ever ever needed anyone or anything it would simply be either, and by now it's email, or pick up, <laughs> or, or pick up the telephone. But I always, they always, we always remember each other in our prayers. And it's so nice to have that someone prays for you. Mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful witness, and I think it's a very important thing that most folks need to hear is our faith is individual, and it helps define and direct us, but it's also communal. It's something that pulls us together and offers that inspiration and love and support as we live and work together. Uh, amazingly, we've come to the end of our time already today. <laughs> we don't have much more time, but I do want to say thank you both for what you do, but also for coming in and sharing this story with us so that we can help tell others as well about mission builders and all that can be accomplished. Thanks so very much. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. It's been our Thank pleasure. You so much. Thanks for being yeah. here. Thank you for being with us today on Lutherans Alive. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this opportunity to be with us and to hear the story of mission builders who have given of themselves to share with the church and people around our country in order that the word may be shared. Until next time, this is Lutherans Alive. Good day and God bless you.